Hello, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, this is a story that probably I don't think I would have paid a lot of attention to were it not for all the gamesmanship that's been going on with this particular presidential administration, and especially the way that the ATF has been used in some sick little pit bullish way. Um, this was, story was brought to us by Ameland, and I think it's a story that all of us need to be aware of and one that we're probably going to have to keep a close eye on. So we're going to spend a few minutes today talking about why is the Department of Commerce asking for sales records from holster companies? Okay, so the story that we're going to be talking about today actually was brought to my attention through AmmoLand.com. Now, if you guys don't know about AmmoLand.com, it is one of the really great places to stay up on accurate and up-to-date Second Amendment news. Uh, they have lots of information related to both federal and state issues, as other, well as other information that's really valuable when it comes to purchasing firearms and things such as that. So visit them at AmmoLand.com. Okay, so... The story is this, is that the Department of Commerce every few years will send out census. Now, this is kind of similar to the census that we all have to fill out as American citizens, or I should say as American residents, um, and turn back into the United States government. Now, what the Department of Commerce sends out is what's called a commodity flow survey. And what a commodity flow survey is, is it goes out and asks for very specific and a lot of information from particular businesses within certain industries. Now, what the United States government claims that they use this information for is to help then develop what is their transportation policies, their energy policies, and any other policies that may affect that particular industry and its flow of commerce within it. Well, it's usually pretty boring stuff, and certainly the firearm industry itself, especially the manufacturers of firearms and ammunition, are routinely served with these commodity flow census. But recently, a large number of American holster manufacturers are being served with the crest for these commodity flow surveys. And the type of information that they're asking is a little bit alarming. You see, the information that the United States government is asking for is, you know, product numbers, product descriptions, that is exactly what is the description, and then the shipping locations of where they sent everything. Now, for many lawful and responsible gun owners nationwide, they become very leery any time government starts accumulating data related to gun ownership, and for good reason. This particular administration has shown that they are the least trustworthy of any administration in the history of the United States when it comes to the lawful rights of lawful and responsible gun owners nationwide. You see, with this data, not only could you derive who is purchasing holsters, but in many ways you would be able to determine what a person is likely carrying and even how they may be carrying a weapon. For example, a holster which is exclusively designed to hold the Glock 19 carried appendix for a right-handed shooter mailed to Joe Schmo in Sheboygan, Wisconsin would tell you an awful lot about what Joe Schmo might likely be carrying on any given day. It has enough of these holster companies concerned that they've gone out and hired a big hit and arbiter, someone who formerly worked for Governor Rick Perry in the state of Texas, to represent them on this. And at least one holster manufacturer has basically already told the Department of Commerce to go stuff it. So we do want to give a big shout out to Chad Myers, who is the president of JM4 Tactical and On Your 6 Design, a holster company which I actually have a few products from, and they're pretty darn good. Uh, but this is what Mr. Myers had to say when asked about this. We will never turn over any information on our customers to the government, no matter the cost to us. To do so would violate our core beliefs. We need to stand up to an overbearing government. Our customers can rest assured that their information is safe with us. So as you can imagine, there is great reluctance on most, if not all, of these holster companies to turn this information over to the Department of Commerce. So what happens? What kind of criminal or civil liability are they looking at? Well, the Department of Commerce believes that they're able to fine each of these companies up to, ready for this? 
$5,000 for not turning over that information. However, I did have an opportunity to review the statute myself right down here, and uh, they're wrong, uh, but they can fine these companies up to $500. So to all of these holster companies, they have the following predicament. They either tell the Department of Commerce that they are not going to get this information and subject themselves to a $500 fine, or they decide to comply with the Department of Commerce's uh, request, turn over very private and sensitive information about otherwise lawful and responsible gun owners nationwide to a government agency for no good reason. My faith lies with these holster companies that they will do the right thing. But then, of course, the question is, is what's the concern? Why should anyone be, be concerned? Well, let us remember this, that up until just a few weeks ago, there was eight states in the United States that were may carry states plus the District of Columbia. That was states that really, unless you can prove an absolute reason for which you needed to conceal carry, you were not allowed to do so. Now, those states obviously got a tremendous smackdown by the United States Supreme Court in New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin. But we've already begun to see some of these governors, Governor Newsom in California, Governor Hockle, create a litany of new restrictions and requirements to ensure that otherwise lawful and responsible citizens cannot, can still not obtain a concealed carry permit. This data, of course, would allow local and state law enforcement and federal law enforcement to learn data on individuals who may believe that they are now labeled to carry because of changes to their concealed carry law. It would allow local and state governments who are hell-bent on disarming otherwise lawful and responsible gun owners additional data necessary to do that. Now, why are we so concerned about it in this way? Well, because we have seen, with this administration in particular, how because they cannot get anything done on the legislative side, they, can have, they have no clout to get anything done from a legislative agenda, that they are turning administrative agencies into little attack dogs to go out and do this. Now, the ATF has traditionally been in this role. They have traditionally moved the goalposts to affect otherwise lawful and responsible gun ownership. It is my belief that the Biden administration is now using other administrative agencies, such as the Department of Commerce here, to again infiltrate and inconvenience as many people in the gun industry and in the lawful and responsible gun ownership community. We will keep you posted about this to see if anything else really newsworthy develops of this. Again, thanks to our friends at Amoland.com for tipping us off to the story. Listen, if you have any more questions about this or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, remember you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.